Hi, I'm Deborah de Blasi, and you're watching Bleed. I first met Vanessa Place, Sissy Boyd, and Teresa Carmody in Los Angeles in the spring of 2007. We gave a reading at Beyond Baroque. Then I met up with the three women again in New York in June of 2007, where uh, Sissy, Vanessa, and I gave a reading at KGB Lit Bar, sponsored by Matt Hatter's Review. The next day I met the three of them outside the Pod Hotel in New York City and we sat down to talk about innovative writing, about what it's like to be a woman writing today, about what the issues are in terms of innovation and in terms of learning how to become a writer. Let's listen. My name is Cece Boyd. I live in Los Angeles. I was a dancer and came to writing late, although my mother was big reader and a lover of words, twister around a phrase. And, um, so I danced and then, shall I talk about the paralysis? I was paralyzed with a virus called Guillain-Barre and I think now, many years later, 30 years later, that that experience put me into language more. And as I started to try to write, um, I got the idea that I would perhaps be writing myself back to dancing, which has actually happened in a way. So it's a very interesting combination for me. It's the theater where I was when I danced, and poetry, which is what I first studied when I decided to try to write. I had two little children and an actor husband and I couldn't, and we had no money so I couldn't really do anything. So that was good. I stood at the kitchen table feeding them donuts to get them to be quiet. When you said to work, you worked your way back to dancing, you mean through the language, right? Yes, yes. I kind of broke through the paralysis, I think. I mean, I think I have a, still a long way to go. I think it really sort of shattered me in some way. But um, I, yeah, it, it broke that paralysis of thinking I couldn't dance anymore or that I wasn't interested in dancing, is what I told myself because I was just so afraid of it. It's interesting what the way people sort of, it's almost like you punish yourself for illness or you, know, you deny yourself what you most love. Maybe for fear of Probably. losing it again, maybe? That's, yes, that's I mean, an I'm... interesting thought. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to, and, and maybe you have so much more understanding and you don't want to see that you weren't what you thought you were. Uh, that's interesting. Actually. Either one. In your reading last night at the KGB lounge of the play, then the body, that's the correct title, isn't it? Um, I told Mark this morning, I said, you know, the language is like a dance and it's like a pas de deux, you know, between ma and, and da and it goes back and forth and you can feel this. You know, I, it's so interesting and wonderful for me that that's seen, that that's heard, because I didn't know how to write, really. So when I had my first teacher, Polly Prado, I think I really had a great teacher because she told me nothing. She told me nothing about what I should do. She just she, let you write. She just let me, and I would come in once a week with two sentences or something, and once in a while she'd say, well, look, look at that and put, put a different word in for this and this and this. And she just made me aware of the sound, and she, I didn't, I wasn't taught a way to write. So it was 15 years that I was with her, 
Really? Yeah. Wow. Once in a while I did a poetry reading with a friend. I had no thought of myself as a writer. I started with John Steffling, and he just threw our plays up. He directed them, cast them. Is this in L.A.? Yeah. John Steffling's a fabulous playwright who's left and gone to Poland. He can't stand it here. But um, he was the first one that said, you're a dancer, and this is, this sounds, this is muscular, this is... Don't you think, in a lot of ways, I mean, that's such an advantage. I, I was just talking to this uh, uh, book critic about it because he talked to me about my, my writing. He says, well, it's very poetic and it's more like poetry. And I said, you know, I find those labels really limiting. Right. Because as soon as I think it's supposed to be this, then I, I feel myself trying to mold it. It was probably a huge advantage for you. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And it's a huge advantage for me to be around people that say that to me to make me start to be aware of what it is and then to believe that it is in me and this is exciting to me because this is what I sound like and I just find that extraordinary.